step is to take care of our hosting and domain name registration and for this we're going to go to my website mrwebreviews.com and from here you can click on this link here in the menu section that says hosting or you can click on the very first link in the description below both of these links will bring you to the same place so let's click on this link and as you can see, this is bringing us to a co-branded page that I have with Hosting. And the reason why this is a co-branded page is because I've negotiated special terms for you guys with Hosting, which means that you will have access to special conditions and special discounts. So let me show you very quickly here. If I scroll down the page, by using either of those links, you will have access to up to 85% discount, as you can see here. And I'm also going to give you a coupon code, a promo code afterwards, that's going to give you an additional 5% discount at checkout. So, all together, extremely competitive pricing indeed. But the reason why I'm using Hostinger is not just about pricing, it's also about quality, obviously, you know. So I've been using Hostinger for a, a while now, to be honest, I've been hosting all my website, all my Mr. Web Reviews website with them, and they are very reliable as well. So this is very important, of course, as you can understand, when it comes to hosting. If you run into any issues, they always get back to you within the hour and they try to get your problem sorted as soon as possible. So again, when it comes down to hosting, this too is very important and you can always rely on them. Now let's have a look at our three different plans here. So we have the single, the premium and the business. And as you can see, the premium one is the most popular one and you will soon understand why. So let's go through each and every one of them. So we have the single plan here, as you can glean from its name, is just for one website only, as you can see here. And also you can only create one email address, one email account. So let's say you're going to create your domain name.com. That's the only website you can host with this package. And you only can create one email address attached to your domain name. So you can only have, for instance, info at your domain name.com. That's it. Now, if you need more than one email account attached to your uh, website, this plan is definitely not for you. And also, with the single plan, you don't get the free domain name, which is valued at $8.99, and you don't get Google Ads credit either. So, if you factor all this together, you can understand why this plan here, the premium one, becomes the obvious choice. Because with the premium plan, on just $1.20 extra per month, you can host up to 100 websites. You can have any amount of emails. You get free domain names as well, free Google Ad credits. So all together, it's a great bundle, a great value indeed. Another thing that's very nice with hosting is that they provide free SSL certificate. And again, this is valued to $11.95. So this is $12 savings, extra savings that you make. So what is an SSL certificate? Basically, it's the padlock that you can see here next to your web address. 
and this will tell your visitors that your website is safe and secure. And this is very important, of course, especially when you're planning to take payments online. And then finally, we have the business plan as well. So basically, the business plan is just a bigger version of the premium one. With this one, you have more uh, storage space, 200 gig of storage space, and you can receive up to 100,000 monthly visits. So depending on your requirements, you can select either of those. But for the time being, let's go with the most popular one, which is the premium plan. So let's go and select this one. And from here, you'll be prompted to select your billing cycle. So as you can see, by default, it will set 48 months. And the reason is because this is where you make the most savings. So basically, with this plan here, 48 months or four years, you only pay $124.32, which works out at about $31 for a whole year. So imagine this $31 for a full year. This is absolutely amazing, isn't it? So this plan would normally cost you $495. You save $369, which leaves you with $124 to pay. So amazing indeed. Now, feel free to select any of those options here. So I can even start with just one month if you're not too sure. Now, bear in mind that if you select one month, it will cost you $10.29. You see a big difference, $259, $10.29. That's almost four times the price. And you also have to pay the set of fees. So the set of fee is free with those three plans here, 12 months, 24 months, and 48 months. With the one month, you'll have to pay the set of fees. So let's go, scroll down very quickly. So if you were to select one month, it would cost you $10.29 plus set of fee $4.99 plus taxes on top, so $18.79. So just for one month. Now let's go and select 12 months here. So this would cost you $71. If you select 24 months, so 71 times 2 would normally cost you one forty for two years. It's only 95. And if we take 95 times 2, it would normally be 190. But it's only 124. As you can see, the more, the longer the billing cycle, the more you save. So again, feel free to select any of those items. I'm just going to select 48 months for now. And then you select your payment method. So you can say credit card, PayPal, coin payments. So coin payments is basically all these the virtual currencies like Bitcoins, Ethereum, and all of them. And then you have Google Pay as well. Now, as you can see at the moment, you get a discount of 74%, which equals to $369.60 worth of savings. Now I'm going to give you a coupon code, which is going to add another 5% discount for you. So click on this, have a coupon code. And type all in capital letters, Mr. Web Reviews, and then click on the plus sign here. So at the moment, we have to pay $152.91, and this is going to go down to $141.70, so another 5% discount. Now, after this, click Submit Secure Payment. And because I've selected PayPal, I'm redirected to the PayPal payment page, but depending on which payment method you've selected, you might be redirected to a different page. After this, just proceed to check out and go through all the steps. Once you've gone through the checkout process, you will receive a couple of emails, confirmation emails from hosting or themselves, and one of them will bring you back to your login page, which is basically here. If you click on this, you can then log in into your account, just like that. And from here, our first step is to claim our free domain. So as you can see, it's this section here. So we're going to click on Claim Domain. And for this, simply enter the domain name you'd want to register. So your domain, and then select the extension. So it could be .com, it could be .online, .tech, .site. There's a few to choose from, as you can see here. You have .info, .net. Now .com is the most popular one, obviously. And then click Claim Domain. Now, if your domain name is not available, you'll be prompted with a message that says, sorry, this domain name is already registered, in which case you have to try a different variation. Now that our domain name is registered, we can set up our hosting. And for this, we're going to go to this section here, and we're going to click on Setup. So from here, simply click Start Now. We're going to skip this step altogether. Skip. We're going to use them with this one because we're going to start from scratch. So skip. And then from here, simply select the domain name you just registered. So as you can see, we only have one at the moment. So your should display here as well. If it's not displaying, click on the drop-down menu and select it. 
and then we go to the next step, click select, and then finally finish setup. And now that our hosting is set up, you can see we have an additional section here that says hosting. So we'll click on manage. And from here, we're going to take care of our server. So we're going to create an email address and then we're going to install WordPress on our server. So first, make sure you set the right domain name. If you have multiple domain name on your server, click on the drop down menu here and make sure you select the right one. So we're going to use mrwebreviews.com for this tutorial. And once you start and you have the right domain name, scroll down the page. We're going to create an email address now. So let's click on email accounts. Now, as you can see, I have several accounts here. So I'm going to select at mrwebreviews.com, this one here. So I'll click on it. And then we're going to add a new email account. So I'll click add email account. And from here, tap the email address that you want to register. So for instance, your.name at yourdomainname.com. And then click create. Okay, and as you can see, we now have a new email address created. And now if you go back to our dashboard, if you scroll down the page, locate the section that says website, and we're going to click on this one that says auto installer. Click on this, and now we're going to install WordPress, but we will also need WooCommerce. So instead of WordPress, instead of this one, we're going to set this one here. So this one will automatically install both WordPress and WooCommerce, which is the e-commerce platform that we're going to use for building this website. So I'll click on this, and we're going to make sure we're going to select HTTPS. So this is to enable the SSL certificate. You need HTTPS in order for that to work. This one, make sure it is empty. As you can see, we can read WordPress, but actually there is nothing. That means that it is blank. So make sure this one is empty and blank. Right here, we're going to type in a username. So, for instance, I'm going to type in Mr. Web Reviews. Create a password. Make sure you have the right email address here in the admin email because this is where you're going to receive all your notifications from your website, including your payments and orders. So, very crucially important. Now, make sure to put a website title. So, I'm just going to put Mr. Web Reviews for now. And everything else you can leave as is. Just make sure you select Always Update to the latest available version and then click Install. Now, this may take a few moments, maybe up to two minutes, uh, depending on how fast your internet connection is. So don't worry, it is normal, it's doing its thing. So this is installed now. And as you can see, we didn't get any message letting us know that it is installed. Basically, once you are redirected to this page, it means that your installation is completed. And now that our WordPress installation is complete, we can access our WordPress dashboard. So we click on dashboard, dashboard again. And here, make sure you've selected the right domain name, so Mr. Web Reviews, and we're going to click on Edit Website. Now you will get a message that says, Welcome to the All-in-One SEO Setup Wizard. We're going to skip that, go back to Dashboard, and we are being redirected to this page. And as you can see, this is our menu section, and we have All-in-One SEO, All-in-One WordPress Migration, Optin Monster. So these are all plugins we don't really need. So we're going to get rid of them and uninstall them. And for this, we're going to go to plugins. So from here, what we're going to do is a bit of cleanup all together. So we're going to bulk select them all and click deactivate, click apply. There you go. And now we're going to select a bunch of them. So we're going to click on estimate and spam, all in one SEO, all in one WordPress migration, uh, this one, Google Analytics, remove this, hello Dolly, opt in monster and W perform light. And then bulk select again and then click delete and then click apply. And we're gonna need all of these, get rid of them all together. We don't need them. There you go. And now if we refresh the page, as you can see we we're, we're left with two plugins which is WooCommerce, which we need for our uh, taxi booking system here. And then with the light speed cache. And this plugin is basically to improve the performances of your website but we cannot activate it yet. We activate it once your website is ready to go live because if this one is activated while we work on your website, we won't see the changes immediately. So this is one thing we want to make sure it is not enabled at this stage. 
and then we're going to add two more plugins. One is the maintenance mode, and the second one is our taxi booking system. So let's click add new. Let's install maintenance. And we're going to take the very first one here from Web Factory and click install. So basically, a maintenance page is a page that will display while you're working on your website so people won't see your website while you're working on it because you don't want to display your website all broken up and not ready for the public. So while you're working on it, you can display a specific page that says under construction or under maintenance. And then when it's installed, we can activate it. There you go. Now if you go to maintenance, you can see where the toggle switch here on top. So make sure this one is switched on and then click save changes. So now if I right click here, on the visit site and open in a new tab because we are logged in as administrator we can see our website this is the content of our website at the moment now if i open this in a separate browser so if i was to open this in firefox instead just like that and open this now as you can see we have a different message on the screen it says taxi booking website maintenance mode is on so anyone from the outside world will see this message instead of your website. And now we're going to install our taxi booking system. And for this, we're going to go to codecanyon.net. And I'm going to leave this link in the description below. So basically, we are going to download the quick cab feature here, this plugin. That's the WooCommerce taxi booking plugin. And this is one of the best plugins for this type of project that I found online because it's very comprehensive and has all the features that you might require. So basically from here you can either add to cart or click on buy now. So purchase this item, it's only $30. And once you've gone through the checkout process, you'll be able to download this plugin. And once you have it, you can go back to your WordPress dashboard and click add new. And from here we're going to click upload plugin and we're going to save the file that we got just downloaded. And your file will look something similar to this. So this is an archive file, so you might have to extract it first. So if you're using Windows, you can simply right-click on it and then extract here. And as you can see, we have a different subfolder now. Click on the quick cap files and then you have the quick cap.zip and this is the file that you'd want to install. So click on this one, select, click open, install now. And as you can see now, it is installing the plugin. And all you have to do now is to activate it. There you go. And now we need to activate WooCommerce as well. So let's click on WooCommerce. And that's it. Now we, and now you can see we are also getting an error message here that says you must save API key 1 and API key 2. So let's go into the quick tab settings. So as you can see, we have a tab here, quick tab. And then we're going to settings. We are going to set up our API key 1 and API key 2. And these two keys are basically required so that we can connect to Google Maps and have all the features linked to it. And for this, we can create one just by clicking on this link. So click on that. And from here, we have to go to the credential page. So click on this button here. And this will bring us to the Google Cloud Platform. And then from here, you can select among two different options. You can either create a new project. So if you don't have any existing project, you can create a new one. Or you can select an existing project. So it's really up to you. So let's create a new project for now. Let's give it a name. So maybe Taxi Booking Website. Click Create. There you go. And from here, we're going to enable the Maps JavaScript API. So click on this. From here, click enable. Very good. And now we are going to create our API key. So we're going to click on credentials, create credentials, API key. There you go. So close this one for now. And then let's do the same again because we have to create a second API key. So click on create credentials, API key again. And you can close this once more. And as you can see, of API key 1, API key 2. And this is basically what we need here. But we have to restrict our API keys. So as you can see, this one should be restricted to the HTTP refers. And this one should be limited to this IP address. So let's do that. 
So the API key should be limited to the HTTP referrer. So this is our web address. So select your domain name, Control C. And now we're going to select the API key one. Click on the edit button here. And as you can see here, it says application restrictions, and we can set HTTP referrals. And we're going to add an item here. And for this, we're going to add three lines. So the first one, you're going to simply paste the domain name exactly the way you have it from your website. And now we're going to type the rest ourselves. So star dot and then Mr. Web Reviews dot com forward slash star done and now we're going to type the exact same star but no dot and then immediately your domain name so mr web reviews.com forward slash star so by having those three different options you are guaranteed this will work on any web browser in any situation now we're going to restrict the api to our google maps api so select api and scroll down and you're going to see we have Maps JavaScript API and click OK. Now click Save. So that's one taken care of. And now let's take care of our API key 2. And for this we're going to highlight the IP address here, right click Copy. And we're going to restrict this one to that specific IP address. So click on the pencil, IP addresses. Add an item, paste it here, click done, and now we're going to restrict the key again to our Google Maps API, Maps JavaScript API, click OK, and then click Save. And that's our two API keys taken care of. Now we're going to copy those two respectively, so we have API key 1, so let's select this one, and we paste it here. And then we have our API key 2, which is this one. And we're going to paste it where it says API key 2. And now you can scroll down and click Save. Okay, so I've been running a few tests and apparently we need to enable more APIs than this. So I'm just going to show you here on screen. So basically we have to enable all of these. So on Google Maps, JavaScript API, Roads, Static Maps, Maps Embed, Places API, Maps geocoding, maps directions, uh, distance matrix, and geolocation. So you will have to enable all these, and once you have them all enabled, both of those keys will have to restrict them using the same API credentials. So right here, if I scroll down, as you can see, you'll have to set both nine different APIs. So basically, if you uh, scroll down here, you'll have to tick those ones, those nines here. So basically, let's put it later on, and then if you go back on, you know, so you do the same for both of them. So API key 1 and API key 2, and uh, this will work. Sorry about that, sorry about the messing about it. I've done a lot of free tests, and I noticed that it wasn't working in the backend. So I consulted the documentation provided by the developers here, and apparently all of these APIs have to be enabled for it to work. And now if you want to make sure that your API keys are working, you can go back to the back end here. You're going to click Cap Settings, and you can see we have Map Starting Location. You can type anything here. You can type a town, a city, a state, a country, or even a postcode if you're based in the UK, for instance. So let's type in maybe London altogether. So as you can see, it, it found it here. So it found London, UK. So click on this. And as you can see, we get a green tick mark after this, which means that it's been recognized on Google Maps. Or if you're based in the UK, you can type in the postcode, WC2H, let's say 9JQ. So we found the street here, certain street. So let's click on this, and again, we get a tick mark. And if you get a green tick mark like this, it simply means that your Google Maps API are working. So click Save after this. And if you want to make sure, double check, we can go into Geofence Rulings. You can create a new one here, add new. And as you can see, our maps are displaying immediately here. So we are at WC2H9JQ. So this is central London, as you can see. So this is walking. Okay, so let's go back to our settings. And let's take care of our journeys now. So let's click on this. Okay, so our first option is we want to set a base location for the vehicle availability. 
So as you can see, here is just to take into account the time taken for vehicles to get from your base location to the journey collection address and so on. So if this is the case, maybe you go back to the depot each and every time uh, before you take on a new job. And if this is the case, then you have to enter your location. So I'm just going to type here Shelton Street, London. Okay, let's say this. There you go. And then is the a return discount rate. So the discount applied to the return leg of the journey. So maybe you want to apply a certain discount rate for this. If this is the case, put that in percent right there. So next, do you want to enforce a minimum or maximum fare? So if this is the case, take out of those boxes and then simply put the amount. So maybe you want to charge at least a minimum of 10 euros or 10 dollars or 10 pounds, whichever it is, you know. And the same for a maximum fare. So the maximum fare is actually the other round. So let's say if you were to drive from one round for the whole day, and from morning to night, what's the maximum you can charge them? So let's say maybe you make it the full day for 450 or maybe $600. And then if someone desires to hire you for the whole day, this is the maximum they'll pay. And then we have minimum and maximum distance as well. So is there a minimum fair distance? So uh, let's say you have to go from uh, your location where you are at the moment and drive to a collection point, and then from there you're going to drive someone around. So to make it worth your while, obviously you might want to enforce a minimum fair distance. So this could be maybe at least five miles. Maybe if you're driving around a city center or something like this in a busy uh, city, or maybe you might increase that if you're in rural area of at least ten miles, maybe or something similar. Make it worth your while, of course. If this is the case, just tick this box, put the location here, and then there's a message you can uh, also uh, display to your visitors online. If they don't reach this uh, minimum or uh, fair distance, then it will say, for instance, sorry, this journey is too short. It should be at least 10 miles, and so on, and so on. And then we have the other way around. Maybe you want to enforce a maximum distance. So maybe from your base location, you don't want to drive more than, let's say, 50 miles. This is the maximum you would reach. In which case, you take this box and put here 50. And then you can also have a custom message for your visitors to see online. And when you're happy enough with your settings, don't forget to save. So click Save Changes, and that's it. And then we have Form. And our four settings here are for the primary and secondary color. So feel free to change this around to fit your own uh, personal preferences. At the moment, it's blue and white. Now we have the booking time interval in minutes. So is how long do you want to uh, leave it for in between bookings? Basically, you know what time you want to keep in between bookings. So five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen, thirty minutes, or up to an hour. So let's set it maybe to ten minutes for now. Now here, there was two options here: uh, whether or not you want to enable fixed addresses. So basically, let's say if your fixed address is like app or run. If you want to drop someone at the airport or pick someone up from the airport or different locations, maybe in your area, that's very common that people would go for or do a very frequently, maybe shopping center or something like this. So if you have fixed addresses that you frequently uh, cover and go to, then maybe you'd like to enable this. So this works for collection and, uh, and these features work for pickup and drop off, obviously, you know, for either, either way. So if you want to use this, Enable this, and then after that, we can go and set them up here in the menu section of fixed addresses. So I'll show, I'll show you that a little bit later in this tutorial. Now, here, enforce autocomplete country restriction. So, very often, a taxi driver is driving within his own country. So, if this is the case, you want to simplify the life of your visitors when they go online and book a fare. So, maybe you want to click on this and then select your country automatically. So I myself am based in Ireland, so let's select this, Ireland. So very simply, just a knife of online on this website. Whatever address I'm going to start typing in, obviously Google Maps will know I'm restricted in, within uh, this country basically. So if I'm looking for, let's say, Main Street, this Main Street could be anywhere, literally, you know, it could be in Belgium, it could be in Germany, it could be the United States, it could be Australia, it could be India, anywhere. Now, if I'm looking for Main Street, you will know that it is Main Street in Ireland, 
and then I can type the name of the town. And this way, I save time, and it's easier to find my location. And then again, when you're happy with everything, all the settings, just click Save Changes. And that's just done for now. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have our vehicles, vehicle features, booking forms, geofence rules, and fixed addresses and soft price rules. So we're going to take care of all of these now. So the first step is to look after our vehicle features. Before we can create a vehicle, we're going to create some features. So let's go to this section now. So what types of features could we have? Well, we could have, for instance, wheelchair accessible vehicle. You know, this is very important. We need so this could be a feature. Now, if you're in a hot country, maybe air conditioning would be a nice feature as well to know that you have a fitted to your vehicles. And maybe, and then maybe for families, you could mention that your vehicle is kids friendly. Maybe you have booster seats for up to two children all these type of features. Well, once you have all your features uh, created here, then we can go to the next step. Now we can create our vehicles. So let's go into all vehicles. And as you can see, we have new at the moment. So we can create a new one. So to add a new vehicle, you can either click on this button here or this link here. Both of them will bring you to the same place. Okay, first, maybe we can start by adding a picture so we have a clear visualization of our uh, type of taxi. So let's select this. So maybe we go with this type of taxi first, so like a sedan, family sedan. So let's type our picture. So let's call this a family sedan, maybe, so we know exactly what it is. Now, we have the fun part of this website, which is the pricing structure. So how do you want to charge? Do you want to charge per mile? Do you want to charge by the hour? Do you want to charge per mile tier pricing or per hour tier pricing? So what's the difference? So basically, so if you charge per mile, this is pretty self-explanatory, you know, you have the price per mile, so maybe you charge $2.50 per mile, so very simple to understand, and you have the same per hour, so maybe you drive someone around per hour, and you say per hour I charge maybe $65 altogether, just something like that. Now we have per mile and per hour tier pricing as well. So what is tier pricing? So let me show you very quickly. So we're going to add tier pricing. So let's start to tier pricing here. So we start from zero miles right up to, let's say, maybe 10. So if you drive up to 10 miles, you will charge maybe maybe $4 per mile. Or maybe $3.50, let's say, $3.50. Now, from 11 right up to maybe 25, your price goes down to $3. Now, from 26, maybe right up to 50, you might charge $2.50. And maybe from 50, and let's say 80 miles is the maximum you're willing to cover, then the price goes down to $2 per mile. So, this is called tier pricing. Now, as you can see, we have a price per mile as well. So, this will be used as the price per mile if the distance exceeds the options that you've printed below. So, let's say if I want to remove this one here, so as you can see, we said $2 if it exceeds 50 miles in distance. So, if I want to remove this one, instead of putting $2 here, I can remove this, and I could put $2 right there instead. And this is basically how you can set up tier pricing, and this works the exact same way per hour. So you can say from zero hour up to two hours, now you would charge maybe forty dollars per hour, and then from three to five, maybe you can charge thirty-five per hour, and anything over that, if you remove this, and you can say maybe it's twenty-five, any and anything over five hours, I charge twenty-five per hour or something similar. So let's keep it simple. So now we're just going to charge per mile. So we have a starting price here. So maybe you have a minimum fare before you can drive off, maybe $10. And then you have a price per mile. So how much do you charge per mile? Because we're charging per mile. Here we see this is a price structure. So let's say you charge maybe $2.50. And then we have a price per passenger as well and per suitcase. So do you want to charge per passenger? Or not, if this is the case, how much is the extra charge? So maybe you charge an extra ten dollars per passenger, and then do charge for suitcases as well. So let's say if someone brings you two suitcases, how much is it? So let's say two fifty per suitcase. 
but you can like put in the trunk or boot, depending on where you live. Uh, here we say boot, but you might say trunk. And then we have the waiting unit. So how much do you charge for waiting hours? So are you willing to wait outside for uh, your customers to come back? So for instance, if you're driving someone wrong, you bring them to the shopping center, they do their shopping and all that, and you're waiting outside the shopping center, how much will you charge? Will you charge by the hour? Will you charge by the minute? This is by the hour. How much is your waiting hour? So let's say maybe you charge $15 per hour, maybe it's $20. Well, whichever amount are you charging, just put it here. And then we have our vehicle options. So what is the passenger capacity? So we said this one is a family sedan. So usually it's three seaters at the back. So let's say three. And now we have the suitcase capacity. So normally you can fit maybe four or five of full size suitcases. So let's say five. And number one, so basically how many of those vehicles do you have on the road? So if you have a fleet of vehicles, how many of them, how many of those are family sedan? Do you have on the road? So let's say maybe you have 10 of them, just like this. And then you can select the calendar color as well. So if you're sharing the calendar with a different types of vehicles, which color do you want to assign to the family sedan? So we have red at the moment, but you can uh, simply select any or uh, other color using this uh, tool here by the side. So let's say this one would be blue. Let's leave it at that. And then that's basically it for our vehicle. Now we're ready. This is sorted out. So let's just finish click update. So there you go, guys. This is how easy it is to set up a vehicle. As you can see, our post is updated, which means that it is safe. Now if we go back to our vehicles and have a look, as you can see, we have our family sedan right here. And with 10 of them, you know, as part of our fleet, it can take up to three passengers, five suitcases, and this is our price breakdown. So super easy again. Now, I'm just going to fast forward this section now. I'm just going to add another few other vehicles. Okay, and just like that, I've recreated a few more options. So we have a private chauffeur, we have a limousine, Mercedes A Class, and a seven seat van and a minibus. So basically, these all have different types of features and price structure as well. Okay, now that we've taken care of our vehicles and features, let's look after our geofence rules. So let me show you this. That's actually a very interesting uh, feature. So let's click Add New to create a new rule. And as you can see, we have two locations here. We have Map 1 and Map 2. Now, as you can see, we are in central London. So let me zoom out a little bit. So just like that, as you can see, this is central London. So we're going to call this one Central London, short slash greater London. So bear with me, you're going to understand very quickly what this is for. So what we do, we have two maps. So we're going to design, the uh, draw a shape here, money by hand. So we're going to draw a shape here, as you can see. I do that roughly now, so you have to uh, do that a bit more accurately, a bit more precise than I'm doing it. It's just for the sake of our tutorial here. So we're just going to go around the outer shape of London. So we're going to call this Central London. So safe shape. And this one is Central London. Click save. Now, if you've gone wrong somewhere, you can always drop any of those small dots and move it around, as you can see, you know. It's very easy to tweak that shape uh, just by dragging those small dots. And then we're going to design our shape number two. So let's zoom out now. A little bit for so this is central London. So what you're gonna do now, I'm gonna show you so you draw almost the same shape on the inside with a little tweak. I'm gonna show you now very quickly. So let's go here like this. To here, there, or here. And then before you reach this dot, just stop above here, and now you go and design the outer London shape. So just like this. So roughly I said, you know. Oops, sorry now. Here, here. Just like that. And now you go back to your initial dot. Now you can see there's a missing uh, junction here. So what we're going to do, we're going to drag this closer. And now those two shapes are interlapping. They're overlapping, sorry, each other. Now we have our shape in number two. And we're going to call this one Great London. Just like that. So click save. So click publish as well just to get the safe side, you know. So now we have 
two different locations. We have Central London, which is represented by the state, and then we have the Greater London, which is outside the uh, city centre. This way, you know. Now, what does this do? Very simply, if you scroll down the page, if someone wants to for a journey going from Central London to Greater London, so outside city centre, you can apply a specific rule. Or it could be the other way around. As you can see, we have the option here for direction. So it's either from location A to location B. So from the origin, which is here central London, to the destination, which is the greater London. Or you can apply this to both directions. So if someone makes a journey from greater London to central London, you can also apply a specific rule. So what is the that rule that you need to apply? Is it a fixed price or increased price? So let's say if it's an increased price, maybe just to go from central London to out of London, obviously it's a busy city, it's going to take your time. Maybe you want to add already $35 extra, or it will be pounds of the you in the UK, but let's say 35 extra. And to which vehicles does this apply? To all the vehicles or specifically to, let's say, only the family sedan. Maybe you won't be using any of the other vehicles, or maybe the seven seater as well, those two vehicles. So this is if you select increase price, or you can select fixed price, in which case you can add the additional fixed price, so maybe 25, like we said, but here you can also ignore the start price rules. So we haven't touched up on that yet. So this is one here, start price rules. So you can also have start price rules added to this option here. Now as always when you're done, don't forget to click update to save. And then let's go back to the reference rules. So as you can see we now have our central London Greater London and you can create as many rules as you want. So you can do it for Manchester, you can do that for Leeds, you could do that for Birmingham, etc. etc. So just click add new and do all the same. Next we have our fixed addresses. So right here, so this is for instance if you have airport run. So if you central London maybe you have Heathrow Airport or something like this. So let's click on add new fixed addresses. And we're gonna call this uh, give it a name. So let's say Heathrow Airport. Just like this, and we're going to enter the location. So I'm just going to copy this right here. You should find it normally. So there you go. And we're going to click on that. So once we have a, a green tick mark, it means that it's been found and confirmed on Google Maps as well. The most airport will have taxi wings as well, where you can uh, wait for customers to come and uh, board your taxi. So basically, you can have this as a starting address, but you can also have as a destination address, so you can go and collect anyone in central London and bring them to Heathrow Airport. And once you're done again, click publish. And that's just done for this. So let's go back to fixed addresses. And again, same principle applies here. You can create as many addresses as you want. So it could be a shopping center, it could be airport like we just did, or any other frequent and common location that people would go to. Next, we have our charge pricing rules. So from here, click Add New, and this is actually a very interesting one because you might want to charge more, let's say, on a Saturday night because there's more people looking for a, a taxi on Saturday night. You can buy uh, from the club or the pub or something like this. So let's call this Saturday night. Just like that. And we're going to select the days of the week or fixed date. So we're going to select the days of the week at the moment. So this is going to be a Saturday, and we're going to start maybe at 8 p.m. Right up until Sunday, early in the morning, so maybe up until 6 in the morning. We're going to add this, and now we have Saturday night in the system as a third pricing rule. And now we can select our price options. So which options do we have? It's only two. We can increase by amount or increase by multiplier. So we have here by amount, so it's a fixed amount basically. So you maybe you want to increase by 0 0.5 or maybe a full dollar altogether. So it's really up to you. You can set that up based on your own uh, preferences. And then we can increase by multiplier as well. In which case, you can multiply maybe by 1.2. So this will increase by 20%. So very easy done like this.
Like you want to add a twenty percent, you would put one point three and so on. Then when you go and just click update to save, and then if we go back to our first quality rules, as you can see, we now have a Saturday night right here, but you can pick as many as you want. So you could have maybe Sunday morning and maybe Wednesday evening and so on. And then we have our custom checkout fields. So basically from here you can ask your customers and different information. So this could be anything really, you know. You can use that for different purposes. So maybe you can ask a simple question like this one. For instance, uh, are you visiting London? Would you like special offers on hotels and city tour? So this is interesting. You know, let's say, you know, this could be something you could use it for. And then on the place of the whole set of typing, maybe you could select uh, yes slash no, because you're going to give them the option to either say yes or no. Is this required? So it's up to you, really, yes or no. And you want to show this in the confirmation email. Maybe you want to take this. And you have three options. So you can select text. So basically, they're going to type in the information. So if you're asking, for instance, uh, where are you from, what's your location, or anything, you know, uh, this will be text. It's not a bit more than just a little bit of text. This will be a full text area. Or we have select, like in our uh, instance here. So we say yes or not. We're going to add our two options. So the first one will be yes. The second one will be no. Very simple, isn't it? And now we click update. And if we go back to our custom checkout field, as you can see, we now have our custom field created. Now, as always, you can create more than one. Obviously, you know, you can create more than one field. And then we have calendar. So, what is the calendar? Basically, this is a quick overview of all the bookings that you have in place on your website. So, once uh, your customers place an order, it will display here. And we have our different colors, as you can see, depending on the vehicles. So, you might have a bit of red, a bit of blue here, a bit of green, etc., depending on the type of vehicle. So, you can have a quick overview per month, per week, per day, or even as a list. So, you will display here just eight slides of bookings. Now, again, this is a quick representation and overview of your workload. So, basically, you can have per week, or per day, or per month, like I said. But you can see the exact same in WooCommerce because this plugin is run by WooCommerce. It's an addition uh, feature to WooCommerce. You can go into all of as well. And all your orders will be displayed right here. So we have none at the moment, obviously. So what we're going to do now, we're going to set up WooCommerce as well. And I'm going to show you how to configure WooCommerce for this purpose. So basically, these are all the settings for your business, all your business information. So this goes from your uh, business name, all the taxes, the payments, etc., etc. So very, very important indeed. So what we're going to do, we're going to type in your address here. So just like that. And then we have our general options. So basically, usually for a taxi, it's within your own country. Uh, if it's very then you're going to cross borders. So we're going to select a specific country here, and we're going to select United Kingdom, UK, just like this. And then we have the shipping location. So this does not apply to us because this is a taxi booking website. So we can disable that all together. So disable shipping and shipping calculation. And again here, a default customer location. We're going to select no locations by default, just like that. So, are you registered for taxes? Are you VAT registered? If this is the case, click this box, and I'm going to show you how to set up the VAT calculation as well. So, do you want to enable coupons? So, maybe you want to run special offers from time to time. If this is the case, and if you run maybe a special offers on social media, maybe on Facebook, Twitter, or maybe some reference, you can use this in order to increase uh, your sales. So, this is very handy and convenient as well. If this is the case, just click the box. And then from here, you can select the currency you want to apply to your website. So, all this while we've been working in US dollars, but if you're based in the UK, you might want to select uh, pound sterling. And if you're based uh, in India, it could be uh, Indian rupees, etc., etc. And then you can select the thousand separator and decimal separator. So, depending again where you're based and located in the world, you might want to change this around and change this slightly. So, click save changes once you're done. And then after this, we go into taxes. 
So as you can see, we have a private section here as well, but this does not apply to us because we are uh, selling taxi fares, basically, so this is not a private person. So we're going to tax immediately, and from here, we can set up our rates and define how we're going to display our prices. So basically, do you want to display your prices inclusive of tax or exclusive of tax? So normally for a taxi uh, booking system, this would be inclusive of tax. So you want to show for your prices with tax included. And then we have a few more options here. So display prices in the shop. Again, you're going to set including tax. And in your shopping cart, again, including tax. So click save item for now. And then we're going to set up our rates. So again, if you are VAT registered, you'll see those options. If you're not VAT registered, you don't have to fill this out. So let's create a row. So we're going to create a new row right here. And this is our first tax rate. So let's say in the UK, the VAT rate is 20%. And we're going to put the VAT the UK right here. And then we're going to set up a country code. So basically here, if someone is coming from a different country, they won't be able to uh, actually book anything on your website, only from within the UK. So let's create a location here. So let's start UK for United Kingdom and select from the drop down menu your location. So it's going to put GB. You can break this down even by postcode and states. So this does not apply to the UK, it's the same rate everywhere. And clearly, shipping does not apply to our business model here, so you can untick this. And once you have enough, click Save Changes. Now, let's say if you do cross border, if you are actually uh, going from one country to the other, maybe you're based in Central uh, Europe, and you go from Germany to France and Belgium, maybe, and maybe Luxembourg, you can have, you can have different rates here immediately depending on where you are driving to. And now we have the most interesting part of all, which is payment. Obviously, the whole name of the game here is to get paid. So, as you can see, we have a few different options. Uh, the first two probably don't apply uh, direct bank transfer and check payment. This is probably uh, not uh, a fix for purpose here. But then we have cash on delivery. So, basically, when you go and pick someone up, they'll pay you uh, cash or by car, whichever it is. So, you can enable this. Maybe this would be an option. And then you can have prepayment as well, so you could have PayPal payments. So if, if you set PayPal, all you have to do basically is click on this and put your PayPal email address right there. So that's all that's required really with the PayPal and just click save changes and that's all you all done already. Now what if you wanted to add a different payment method? So maybe you use Stripe, maybe you use Google Pay, Amazon Pay or any of them. So how can you add a not different payment method here? So let me show you very quickly. So you're going to plugins, add new. So I'm just going to open this in a new tab for now. There you go. So let's say you want to use Stripe. So let's put Stripe. New commands, just like this. And basically, any payment method, basically, you can just type here for Amazon Pay or Google Pay and then put WooCommerce next to it, and it will show you all the available uh, plugins that will work for that. So, as you can see, we have a few different options here. We have this one here and that one. So, which one should you select? Well, a good uh, rule of thumb for me is just basically go with the most uh, active installations. So, this one is 800,000 plus. This one only 70,000. So by default, I would go with the one that has the most installation. So we click on this now, install. There we go. And now we can activate it. Very good. So now I can pause this. If we go back here and if we refresh this page, you will see that now we have all these additional payment methods added to our payment methods. So basically we have Stripe, and then Stripe on contact, and GyroPay, etc, etc. Because Stripe uh, covers a lot of different countries, you can say the one that, apply, that applies to your uh, own country. Or you can have the generic one, which is this one. And basically if you click on it, you can then log into your account and you will uh, auto-populate a uh, test mode or live key, and this will be done automatically for you. So very simple indeed. Next, we have accounts and privacy. So do you want to allow guest accounts? So basically, would you like to allow people to book in a fair, a taxi fare without having to create an account, which I would highly recommend in this instance, 
because the less stumbling blocks uh, we put uh, on their way, uh, the more likely they are to actually uh, proceed to check out. So I would say you might want to take this one to increase your chances and then allow customer to log in into an existing account during check out. So you might want to take this one as well in case they select create an account because you might want to place more than one order with you, in which case, if this is done, it will simplify the process greatly and increase the chances of getting repeat business. So that's basically it for uh, the settings, the WooCommerce settings, so we all them here. So next step is to actually design our website. But first, let's have a look at what our website looks like at the moment. So I'm going to open this in a new tab, and as you can see, it's not really appealing at all. It is very basic indeed. So we're going to remedy this by installing a theme. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to go to appearance themes, and we're going to use Astra. The Astra theme is actually free of charge. So I'm going to add new. In the search box, type in Astra. And it fits up here first in the results. So, as you can see, this is Astra theme. Again, the full version we're going to use for this demo or this tutorial is absolutely free. We're going to use all the starter templates which are free of charge. So, just click install. There you go, now it's installed. And now, all we have to do is to activate it. So, click activate. It's going to take a few seconds. There you go. New theme is activated. So, now it is installed and activated. And now we are going to hover on top and click on theme details. And as you can see, we have a button here, the button that says Astra Option. So click on this one. And we are going to install the starter template. So right here, so this is just installed 150 page starter templates. Again, these are free of charge. So you can choose among 150 plus starter templates to build your website here free of charge. So absolutely amazing. So we're going to click on install import of plugin. Click on this. And now from here we're prompted to select our page builder. So you can see we can select from four different options. So Gutenberg is the default page builder that's built in into WordPress. And then with Elementor, which is by far the most popular one. And we also have Beaver Builder in Breezy. So feel free to use any of these, but for the sake of our tutorial here, I'm gonna go with Elementor because it is, as I said, by far the most popular one and the most user friendly. So let's click on Elementor. And now you can see it is displaying all the starter templates that you can choose from. So basically there's many, many of them. Now we're going to narrow this down to free ones. So as you can see, we have a drop down menu, click on this and click free, select free. And these are all the free ones we can choose from. Now feel free to choose any of these as your starter templates. But I've been through all the different options and I found one that would be very nice and suitable for our project, which is this one here. And for piano lessons. So you might be wondering why would you choose a piano based theme when we are building a Google Taxi booking website? Well, basically, those themes, those starter templates are customizable, of course, and you can change everything around. So all we need basically from this theme would be the home page and complete page. But regardless, we're going to import the whole site. So we just click import complete site, click on this, and then Click next. So we need to import everything basically. Yeah? So click next. Click all those boxes. And now this is going to take a few minutes. So it's going to install all the, the essential plugins like Elementor and everything. It's going to import our pages, our widget, and everything will be done for us in just a few clicks. All right, so all done already. So this just took about a minute or so. So then you can close this window now. And if we go back to our website and refresh, so this is what our website used to look like. Now if we refresh, and as you can see, our website has been fully recreated and imported. Now obviously, we're not going to need all these sections. We're going to tweak things around. So let's go ahead with this and let's customize our homepage. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. And then from here, we are going to locate our homepage, which is right here. You can see it says home. And if you hover on top, you can see we have a few different options with edit, quick edit, review, and edit with Elementor. So we are going to edit this with Elementor. So we right click on it and open this in a new tab all together. So it's going to be easier for, for us to go from one to the other. So we have our home page right here. We have our Elementor page. And we have our WordPress dashboard for when we have to uh, do some changes and change our settings. So it's much easier again to go from one to the other. So this is our Elementor page.
Now, element four is a visual page builder. So basically, how does it work? As you can see, on the left hand side, we have our menu with all the different elements. So we have intersection, heading, image, text editor, video, button, etc., etc. We have many to choose from, as you can see. And now, if I hover on top here, you can see there's a blue um, menu here that's uh, presented to us. And all around this section, you can see there's a blue edge as well. So if I click on this, and this is basically a section. And every section contains different columns. So as you can see, that small gray icon here, if I click on this, this is a column. And each column is made out of different elements. So if I click on this now, this is the heading, so this is an element. So let's go to the next one here. If I click on this, you can see this is a section. This section is made out of one column here, so it's two one. And if I click on this, as you can see, if I hover on top, we have one, two, and three different elements. So this is a heading, this is a heading as well, and this one is a divider. So this is basically how it works. So what we want to do basically is to change the background color here, change our main heading here, and have maybe this button linked to our booking system. And then underneath it, we might remove some of those all together and just have our booking system. And we might keep the button section here with a call to action button again. So let's go back to the top now and let's take care of this. Okay, now very first step is to replace the piano lesson picture here in the background because this is not really suitable for our type of project. So we're going to click on edit section. We're going to style. And as you can see, this is our picture here. So click on this, and we are now going to replace this with our own picture. So let's upload a file, select file. And I thought we could put a picture maybe of Central London. There you go. And then insert media. So now as you can see immediately, this is a lot, a lot better. And you can easily reposition the picture as well, depending on, on the size. So as you can see, it's a center center at the moment, but maybe I wanted it to be bottom left, or maybe bottom right, as you can see, or just center center. So again, you can change the position of your image using those features here by the side. Now, depending on the type of picture that you selected, you might want to increase the contrast between your heading here and the background picture. So how can we do this? Well, we can add a background overlay. So let's click on this. And then from here, you can select a color that you want to apply as an overlay on top of your image. And then you can select the opacity. So we have black at the moment. And then we'll get opacity. So zero being fully clear, transparent, basically. And then the opacity to one is fully opaque. So you might want to change this to increase the contrast between uh, your text in the background picture. So maybe you want to be maybe 0.75, let's say like this, and then you can set another color as well. So maybe your company colors are maybe red or blue or whichever, and then you can select your own color right here. So let's go for blue maybe, just like that. And now clearly we have a lot more contrast between our text in the background. It's much easier to read. Now we can click on our heading and we can change the content. So it says pursue your passion here. So let's change this to book your taxi. Let's keep it simple, you know, as simple as possible. Make it very easy for your visitors to know what your website is about. Now, this type of font is not really suitable for this type of project. You want something maybe bolder and easier to read. This is more maybe for a fashion website or something like this. So we can go into style. And our font is basically the typography. So if you click on this one font here, it will allow you to set your own font and your family font. So let's go maybe with Poppins, which is a very uh, common one these days. And you can select the weight as well. So let's make it thick, very bold, just like that, very easy to read. And as you can see, our letters are slightly slanted from the italicized. So you might want to change this. So click on style and click normal. And this is a lot better. Very easy to read indeed. Now we have our subheading here. So basically, this is to give your visitors a bit of more information about what services you offer. So let's say you could say something similar to this. Uh, book your taxi, mini cab, mini bus, executive car, or even so that with an end, private chauffeur will drive you from and to any location in the Greater London. So very easy to read as you can see.
Now, ideally, we'd like our subheading to be two lines maximum, as you can see, it's taking three lines at the moment. So, what we can do is to reduce the size of the left, the right hand margin here. So, we're going to advance, and as you can see, we have a padding here of 277 on the right hand side. So, we can reduce this basically up until we can take on it takes on two lines. So, maybe you can reduce that to 230, and this is a lot better. And as you can see, we have two calls to action here. Uh, so register online and learn more. So we cannot use this at the moment, so we're going to change this later. But basically, we link this to our booking system. Now let's scroll down our page, and we're going to get rid of a few sections that we don't need. You know, so this one, for instance, we can remove this. So click on, hover on top of the section, and then click on the X. We might keep this one to give a bit of background story. We don't need this one. You can delete this. Do the same with this one, delete, again, delete this one as well. And as we said, we're going to just keep this one because we have a call to action. So this is all fine as well. So now let's go back to the top now. And we are going to replace this section with our booking system right there. Now, as always, don't forget to update every time you make some changes. And now let's go to our back end, so WordPress dashboard. We're going to quick cut and we're going to create a booking form. So let's click on this. And as you can see, we have none at the moment, so we're going to create a new one for add new. And let's give it a name, so maybe taxi booking system. Now, all these options are already familiar to us because we have them in settings and form. So these are the default settings, but you can change them along as well to fit your own purposes here. So we have the primary color, secondary color, and the booking interval. So let's set it to 10 minutes, maybe. So do you want to use addresses from the collection area? Let's say yes. Do you want to use fixed addresses? Let's say yes. Do you want to install autocomplete country restrictions? So, uh, if, for instance, you're working in the UK, it will be only for the UK. So, ideally, I would say yes. And then we can select the location itself. So, let's say United Kingdom, or whichever part of the world you live in. And then, do you want to enable waypoints? So, let's say someone is booking a journey from their home, let's say to their local shopping center, but they would like to pass by the bank to get some money from the ATM, maybe. So, would you like to allow this? Do, would you like to allow waypoints? And then you can enable extra waiting time as well. If this is the case, you can select the unit and uh, the value as well. Now, let's go to the next section here. So all these are basically options related to the map that will be displayed on the page on the booking system. So do you want to enable a zoom control, a map tab control, street view control, view screen control, and pan control? So these are pretty self-explanatory. And once you're done, scroll back uh, to the top of the page and then click publish. There you go. Now if we go back to booking forms. And once we have saved and updated our page, you can see we are provided with a short code. So highlight this, right click, copy, and now we're going to go to Elementor. And from here, we're going to insert this short code onto our page. Now for this, we have to select an element. We're going to type in short. And as you can see, we have a short code here. So grab this. And then drop it somewhere on your page, so maybe right there. This would be absolutely fine. So we can delete this, right click on that, delete. We can delete this one, delete. We're going to keep this as a heading, and right here, click on our shortcut section. And this is where we're going to place the shortcut we just copied, so Ctrl V. There you go. So we can remove all the space in, the, in front of it, just like that. And now click update. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, you have a preview of what our form looks like. So, this is right here. So, let's have a quick look at the You know, let's just click a preview here so to see our changes. So, this is our header, which looks absolutely fantastic. And this is our booking form. And we have three different steps for the journey information, then select the hotel, and then payment. So as you can see here, the journey information, you can only select from the drop-down menu. We cannot type anything ourselves. And the reason is, is because we selected uh, collection and destination address. We took those two boxes. So if we go back here to our form, booking form, if we edit this, let me show you where these options are. Click on this. 
So as you can see, use fixed addresses for collection and destination. If you untick those two boxes, now your visitors will be able to type in any address altogether. So let's refresh this page now. And as you can see, now we are able to type any address we want for collection and destination. So let's say we can see here on the map Better Street Street. So let's type this Better Street Street. Oops. There you go, London. And let's say we're going to go to Heathrow Airport, just like this. Okay. So it's going to calculate the distance automatically for us. As you can see, it's 17.9 miles. And it would take about 45 minutes. And we can select one way or return. So usually, if you go to the airport, it's usually one way. Let's say there's one passenger and maybe one suitcase. So we have to select a depart depart today. So maybe this is for Friday. And we select a time. Let's say maybe half eight in the morning. Let's say maybe half eight. There you go. And then the next step is to select our vehicle. So we click on select vehicle. It's finding vehicles for us, and it's going to show us the list of available vehicles for this type of journey. So very easy, isn't it? As you can see, absolutely fantastic and super easy to configure as well. So now, let's go and change our heading here. Let's make it more obvious what it is for. So we go back to our editor page, and then we're going to scroll to our section, highlight it, or click on it to change the content. And we're going to do this one. We can simply book. Uh, type book now. Keep it simple, you know. And again, as you can see, we can change the font. So we're going to go to style and typography. And we're going to change this maybe to Hawkins again. There you go. And we might select maybe 900 again. And instead of italic, we're going to select normal, just like this. And we might maybe uh, add underlined, maybe here. Underline just like this. Keep it very simple, like you know. So click update. So let's have a quick look now. If we scroll down, as you can see, it says book now, and we fully understand what this is for. This is our booking form. Now, maybe we want to make it even more obvious that this is our booking form. So, what we can do is go back to our back end, going to select our section here, and we're going to go to style. And we're going to add a background color. So, let's select maybe a gray color, or maybe the same blue as we had before. So, we can uh, click on the color center here and select the blue. So, we have the same color. That's the one. Perfect. And then as you can see now, our form will stand out much, much more than before. We can clearly see it. So click on update. Let's have a quick look. If we scroll down, as you can see, we can clearly see our booking form now. So we're going to change our font here to white. So let's click on this now. And let's change the text color to white, just like this. Let's update again. Let's go back to the front. And if you scroll down, as you can see, you can't miss it now. It is clearly there, it is obvious that this is our booking form. Now, let's take care of the rest of our page from this section here. So, as you can see, maybe you can match this color with our new blue section here. And we're going to change this as well. And we're going to remove the bottom bit altogether. All this footer because we don't need it. We're just going to use this as our footer. So let's go ahead with this. So we go back to our Elementor page. Scroll down the page now. And as you can see, this is the about us section. So basically from here, it would be nice to tell your visitors who you are, where you're based, how long you've been in business. Basically give them a bit of background story to build a bit of credibility and trust factor, of course. So clearly from here, the first thing we want to do is to change our picture, make it more relevant to our industry. So let's select a new file. So I found a nice picture of London here uh, with the bin. So we can insert that maybe, make it more local, insert. And as you can see, this is much better already. Now here you could have a citation maybe or something that uh, someone in your company would say, maybe the director of the company, and then you can change the name. So you can put here the director's name, and maybe the uh, function is the position in company. So basically, he is the CEO of London Cabs. There you go. Something like this, basically, you know. 
and then you can do the same and change the content here. So instead of piano institute, just change this and put London clubs at your sorry at your service twenty four seven something like that, you know. And then you can go into style again and change the typography because we have selected another font, so we go with poppins again. And maybe, maybe not as thick as yours, maybe 700, just like that. And we're going to change to this normal mode. And that's about perfect now. And as you can see, we have a small heading here as well. So, driving you from A to B. There you go. Something simple, you know. And we have adapter, so we might not need this. So, right click on it and then delete. And we keep it simple. So, you can feel free to change the text here, the content, put the history of the company, maybe, or uh, whatever motto or tagline you may have that would increase the chances of getting a business compared to anyone else. And as always, don't forget to click update. Okay, so let's have a quick preview of our work so far. So we have booked a taxi, nice heading, we have a booking form right there, uh, almost unmissable, you can't miss it at all. And then we have a bit of history about the company and the trust building factor. So what's left basically is the footer section. So we're going to remove the footer section altogether and use this as a footer section with a call to action. So we go back here now. So let's take care of this section first. So we're going to change the background image. So I'll click on the section. We're going to style. Select this. And you can still the exact same picture we had before. So insert this. And we can see the position. Maybe we have center center. As you can see, probably it's probably better. Sorry. And then we can change the overlay color as well. So let's go for a blue color that we had before. Let's select this shade of blue, and we're going to increase the opacity slightly as well, just like that. We're going to change our heading here, so just book now. Keep it simple, you know, book now. And now we're going to change the font as well. So, go into typography, and we're going to make it poppins and ultra bold, black, so just like that, 900. And the style will be normal as well. Now we have our subheading that we can change. So let's type something maybe along, along those lines. Maybe click here to book your taxi and then click update. And as you can see, we have all these call to action button. We have this one here and we have two on top. So let's change these around and let's link them immediately to our booking form right there. And for this, we're going to just sign an anchor tag. So basically, we're going to change the CSS ID. And for this, click on our section here and then advanced. And as you can see, with CSS ID, so we're going to give it a unique ID. So book, uh, book hyphen now, for instance, yeah. So copy this, control C. And now we're going to go to our button here on top. So we only need one, basically. So maybe right click on this one and delete and click on register online. So we're going to change the content of this. We're going to put book now. And when you have the hashtag, after the hashtag, type in or paste your book now ID. So this is your CSS ID. So hashtag and then your CSS ID that you've created. So book now. And now we're going to do the same at the bottom of our page. So we're going to click on this, edit. We're going to call this book now. And right there, after the hashtag, copy your CSS ID again. So let's click update. There we go. So let me show you this in action. So we go to our home page. And if I click on book now, as you can see, it's being used automatically to our booking form. And now if I go to the bottom in the photo section, if I click on book now as well, it's going to bring us to the exact same place. So this is super easy for your visitors to find the booking form and super easy to actually proceed to check out. Now, we have one more thing to do is to get rid of our footer section here all together. So how do we do this? Very simply, we go back to our uh -oh. dashboard, WordPress dashboard. You know, because this is a booking website with a booking system mainly on the home page, we might add a contact page and that's all. We really don't need this footer section. So what we can do is just basically get rid of it all together and hide it.
And for this, we're just going to use a bit of CSS coding. So if you right click on this, inspect. As you can see, you can select your section here. So this is the one. This is our whole focus section. And now we click add. And we're going to create our code. So display none. This is to hide it, basically. Now we don't have any more focus section. It's gone all together. So we can highlight this. Control C to copy. And now we go back to our WordPress dashboard. And we're going to go to appearance. Customize, and you're going to locate the section that says add this in the CSS. And you're going to copy this here, Ctrl Z, to publish. And now, if you refresh our home page, just refresh, simply like this. And now you can see now it's absolutely beautiful and sweet looking. All we have is book your taxi, our call to action buttons. Our, our form, our booking form here, a bit of a background story about our company, and then book now again. So basically, everything you wanted to do is simply laid out. It's very sleek looking indeed. Now, let's take care of our menu section so we can change our logo here. And we're going to remove a few pages that we don't need. So we're just going to keep home, contact, and we're going to assign a call to action here again. That will say book now, so straight up in the menu section. So let's just have this first. So let's go to the back end, we go into appearance, customize, and then you can hover on top. So let's click on this, and we're going to give it an address. Now we used to type in hashtag book now just to link it, but because this button is available on any pages, so if I click for instance on the contact page, this button here is still available. What we need to do is to put the full address of the website. So we're going to click on this and select the whole uh, URL, Control C. And in front of the hashtag book, now we're going to place that address. So basically, it's your domain name forward slash hashtag book now. And if you click publish, now let's say we're going to go to the testimonial page and go back to the contact page. And I click on Enroll Today. And as you can see, this is bringing us to our contact form immediately on the home page. So let's call this now Book Now. There you go. Let's publish. And now, regardless of where you'll be on the website, you'll be able to click on this. It's going to bring you to the home page, but not just that, but also straight up to the contact form. And as mentioned before, we're just going to keep two pages, keep this website very simple. So we're going to remove the borders, programs, and testimonials, get rid of that all together. So all we want is the home page, contact page, and book now. So for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard, appearance, menus. Make sure that you selected your main uh, primary menu here, click select. And as you can see, these are the exact elements that we have from the form of all this program's testimonies contact, which is exactly what we have here in the front end. And now we can delete these all together. So remove this one, remove this one, and remove that one as well. And then click save. There you go. As you can see, the main menu has been updated. And then if we go back to our home page and refresh, all we have is the home page, the contact page, and the book now. So this is basically all you want on this type of website. Keep it as simple and streamlined as possible. And now the only two things left as far as to do is to take care of our logo here. So we can change this for our own logo. And then we're going to take care of our contact page. Yeah. And for this, we're going to go back to our WordPress dashboard. We're going to click on appearance and then customize. And from here, just hover on top of the logo, a small pencil will appear, click on that, and this is from where we can change our logo. Now, clearly, because our background is a dark background, we want to have a bright logo, at least in white font, or white color anyways. So let's click on this. So let's upload our new file, select file, let's upload our logo, as you can see, it's a white logo. Click open, and then choose image. Now, clearly, this is way too big, as you can see, you know, for example, a large image, uh, if the file is quite large, it will display uh, way too big on your screen. And don't worry, you can change the size. If you scroll down, it's the logo width, so you can just drag and drop this to make it smaller. So, up until maybe this size, this will be just about perfect, and then click Publish. 
Now, if you go back to our homepage, this is the, what the logo used to be like. If you refresh, we now have our own logo. Now, the last step, the only thing we have left is our contact page. So, as you can see, this is what it looks like. Now, the footer section here will be replaced with the one we have on the home page. So, let me show you very quickly. So, make sure you have the home page still open in one tab. And then we go back to our WordPress dashboard. We go to pages and select the contact us page, which is this one here. So, we can edit with Elementor. There you go. So, this is our page. So, the first thing we're going to do is just replace this footer section with the one from the home page. So, how can you do it? Very simply. So, right click on this, click copy, and now we go back to our other page, right click on this, and then paste. As you can see, now we have an exact copy of this footer section, and now you can delete this one. There you go. Very simple, isn't it? Now we're going to change something very quickly, which is a book now on the button here. Remember, we have hashtag book now because we were on the home page. Now we need to add the full URL before that. So, control C and then paste it here. Control V. So, basically, your full domain name forward slash hashtag booking. So, click update. So, this is one thing done. And now let's take care of the rest of the content here. So let's look at our Google Maps. So click on the small pencil and you can change the address here. So I'm just going to type a postcode WC28QQ in central London. And it's going to find it immediately for us. So let's click update. But you might as well type the full address. So maybe uh, Main Street, uh, such location, and such city. It's all the same. And then you can select the zoom. Uh, effect as well, so if you want to zoom in or zoom out, so maybe we just leave it as is at the moment. And then we have our contact info section here, so let's click on the whole column. And the reason why I'm doing this is because as you can see, it's a dark gray color here, which doesn't really match our color scheme. As you can see, our home page is more in the blue shades, so maybe we can use the same blue we have here in the background. So if we go back here, select our section, Click on the blue. We can highlight this and then copy it, Control C, and then we can use the color as a background color here as well. So again, click on the color section. We're going to add a background color, select the color, and just paste it here. And now we have the exact same shade, same blue as we had here on the home page. So if we refresh our home page now, let's click on the logo. We're going to contact. As you can see, the color. Uh, the screen is uh, the same throughout the whole website now, which makes more sense. Now, let's go back to our Elementor page, and as you can see from here, you can just hover on top of any section and you can start editing its content. So, very uh, straightforward. Basically, if you want to change your address, phone number, as you can see, is divided in three different sections, just like this. And if you wanted to add an item, simply add this, and you could have maybe mobile. And then you could put your mobile phone from so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, for instance, you know. And then you can select an icon as well. So click on this and look for a phone, maybe. And select one that looks like a mobile phone. So uh, maybe you're going to put mobile. There you go. And select this icon here. And start. And as you can see, you can simply add a new section. Like that. And you can also delete any of them by clicking the X sign to delete it all together. Once you have enough click update, and then you can delete from with any of those sections, just have on top clicking them to edit its content. And like the last thing I'm going to show you is the social media icons here at the bottom. So as you can see with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and YouTube, you can add an additional one if you wanted to, just select and choose the icon that fits that social media. And you can delete one by just clicking the X sign. So basically, click on any of these, and then you can add the link. So instead of the hashtag here, you're going to put the Facebook address. 
you instead of the hashtag, you put your Twitter address and so on. Now, if you want people to go and to a different page, you can click on this small gear here and make sure to click open in a new window. So basically, when someone is on your website, you don't want them to leave your website to go to your social media accounts. So it's probably better if you open that in a new window. And make sure you do the same for all your social media items. And as always, when you're going, click update to save, and that's it. Now, if we scroll down, as you can see, we have this section here, which is of no purpose to us, so we can just delete it. And now we have an absolutely fine looking uh, contact page, to be honest. Very simple, straight to the point. We have our location, all the contact details, and a book now, which is going to redirect them immediately to the home page and the booking system. Okay, so as always, don't forget to update, and then we go back to our contact page. So let's refresh now. And there you go, this is the finished product. Absolutely outstanding and beautiful looking, as you can see. Now, before we can launch our website, let's make sure that everything is working fine. So, let's click book now and let's go through the whole checkout process. So, we're going to start from Battleston Street in London. We're going to go to Heathrow Airport, just like this. And remember, we can add any location in between. So let's say we're going to add Wembley here for no apparent reason, but let's say this is added. We're going to go to Wembley Stadium on our way there. And as you can see, it's a bit of a detour and then back. So this would be, take about an hour and 15 minutes. So this is to one passenger, it's one way. One passenger, we're going to add one suitcase. And then we're going to do this on Friday at half eight in the morning. So let's say 30. Uh, right here, and then we're going to select the vehicle. So let's find the vehicle now. And there you go. And this is why we want to test everything and make sure everything is fine. So, as you can see, uh, we need to send a request from this IP address. So, highlight this, control C, and now we're going to go back to Google Cloud. So, Cloud, as you can see here, we're going to make sure that our API key is limited to this. Uh, IP address as well. So as you can see, this is our API key number two, like we uh, mentioned in the beginning, which is restricted to a specific address. So let's open this now. And we're going to add a new item here. So this address here is the very one. So we're going to add it here in the uh, list of restrictions and then click save. Now, give it a few minutes, up to five minutes, and it should be fine. Okay, guys, now so waited about five minutes, which is the recommendation for Google to, uh, for the API to take effect and be updated. So, I re entered all the details. So, I basically refreshed the page and re entered all the details like we had done before. So, we're going for Battleston Street to, to Wembley and then here for Airport on Friday uh, at 8 30. So, let's click select vehicle. It should work normally. There you go. So this is showing us everything that's available. So all the different vehicles uh, available for the route, for the journey. So we have the family sedan, we have a seater, seven seater, sorry, a minibus, a van. We can have a private chauffeur. We can have the E-Class driver or even limousine for up to 400 pounds if we can afford it. Why not? So there you go. So let's go with the cheapest option here just for the sake of it. So let's click book now. And then from here, we have to enter our details. So let's do this now. So just like that, basically, you know, you put your name, last name, company name, the address, etc., etc. And then here, we have a few additional information as well. And as you can see here, this is where you'll find our custom fields that we set up early on. So are you visiting London? We will have special offers on hotels and city tours. So your visitors or customers might select like this and say, oh, yes, why not? And then we go back to the top here, and then we can select our payment method. So this is our total, the review, and we can select cash on delivery or PayPal. So we're not going to use PayPal now, you know, obviously, because we need to use cloud and actually process the payment. So we're just going to select cash on delivery, and we're going to click place order. There you go. So this is our review of our order. That's the confirmation that has been received. And from here, your customer can double check if everything is okay. So, this is the total amount, the email address, and the billing address, all is there.
and you and your customers will both receive a confirmation email. So this is the email you will receive, as it says here, to use this to the foreign order from John Doe. So as you can see, you have the details of the route as well, it's so from 1 to 2 to 3. And this is basically it here. We have everything there. So you have the family sedan, the stumpy point, you go through Wembley Stadium, and finally you're going to look at Heathrow Airport, and this is the date and it's been booked for. So very easy to understand indeed. And now, this is the email that your customers will receive. So it says, thank you for your order. Hi, John, just to let you know, we've received your order and it is now being processed. So now let me show you in the back end how do you process this order and how this is working. And for this, we're going to our WordPress dashboard once more. And there are two ways to access this. You can either go to WooCommerce and check the orders. As you can see, there's more one here. That means that you have one new order that hasn't been uh, taken care of yet. And or you can go to Quick Tab and you click on Calendar. So this will give you a quick overview of your month, week, or days ahead. So if you have on top, you can see we have all the details here. So we collect the address and the destination. Now if you click on it, it will bring you basically to WooCommerce in the order section. You will open that order immediately. So here on top, as you can see, is very handy, very practical. We have the map. We have our locations here, the, the route itself. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we have the order details. We have a total here. And we have the status as well. So at the moment, as you can see, it is uh, processing. But you can change this to pending payment on hold, completed, cancelled, refunded, or failed. So normally from processing, you would go to completed once your driver has gone and processed the job. So there you go guys, this is how you can build a taxi booking system from scratch. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.